Fauci might be going to jail. That's right. Uh, there is now evidence that has been uncovered by Rand Paul and those that are on the select subcommittee for the coronavirus pandemic. They have uncovered some emails that very much implicate Anthony Fauci in some lies. And if you remember the really heated exchanges that happened between Rand Paul and Anthony Fauci back in 2021, so this was in May of 2021, and then in July of 2021, the two of them got into these back and forths, and Anthony Fauci even started doing this. We're gonna show you the video so that you can remember. Um, and then we're gonna give you the bombshell update uh, that could actually land Anthony Fauci in jail. Now. If he goes to jail, if he is ends up being convicted, it would be of perjury. And this is kind of one of those wah, wah moments because a lot of times when they're trying to, you know, when I say they, they is like the ominous they on either side, they, when they are going after somebody and they're trying to get them for some crime, they're gonna nail them for a crime. It usually ends up never being for the crime that they're trying to nail them for, right? It always ends up being perjury or obstruction of justice. And we've seen this over and over and over again. They try to get, they try to get them for some big crime. This is gonna be it. We're gonna crack down on corruption and government. The other side's going down. They're evil, corrupt people. And ultimately it just ends up being, um, like I said, perjury or obstruction of justice. The same thing would be for Fauci. So if you were hoping Fauci would go to jail for something really, truly sinister and nefarious regarding the COVID pandemic, if you were hoping that he would go to jail for, um, you know, plotting and planning the pandemic or making gobs of money with big pharma and lying to the American public, whatever that might be, that is not what this is going to be. It's going to be perjury, but it's still really significant because if our justice system is truly unbiased and truly fair, they will go after Anthony Fauci for this and he will be convicted. Whether or not he serves time for it, you know, we see a lot of these guys get a slap on the wrist and maybe some house arrest or something along those lines, or their sentences get commuted. You could expect Biden would probably be like, I'll oh, pardon you. That would be expected, but it still should happen. So let's start off with, um, let's start off with the videos so uh, let, let's go to May 11th. This is when Rand Paul, Senator Rand Paul from Kentucky, initially grilled Fauci. And this is where the whole thing starts, when he grills him about gain of function research. I'm sure you'll remember this, but here's the refresher. Watch the video. Dr. Fauci, we don't know whether the pandemic started in a lab in Wuhan or evolved naturally, but we should want to know. Three million people have died from this pandemic, and that should cause us to explore all possibilities. Instead, government authorities, self-interested in continuing gain-of-function research, say there's nothing to see here. Gain-of-function research, as you know, is juicing up naturally occurring animal viruses to infect humans. To arrive at the truth, the U.S. government should admit that the Wuhan Virology Institute was experimenting to enhance the coronavirus's ability to infect humans. Juicing up super viruses is not new. Scientists in the U.S. have long known how to mutate animal viruses to infect humans. For years, Dr. Ralph Barrick, a virologist in the U.S., has been collaborating with Dr. Shi Zengli of the Wuhan Virology Institute, sharing his discoveries about how to create super viruses. This gain-of-function research has been funded by the NIH. The collaboration between the U.S., and the Wuhan Virology Institute continues. Doctors Barrick and Xi worked together to insert bat virus spike protein into the backbone of the deadly SARS virus, and then used this man-made super virus to infect human airway cells. Think about that for a moment. The SARS virus had a 15% mortality. We're fighting a pandemic that has about a 1% mortality. Can you imagine if a SARS virus that's been juiced up and had viral proteins added to it, to the spike protein, if that were released accidentally? Dr. Fauci, do you still support funding of the NIH funding of the lab in Wuhan? Senator Paul, with all due respect, you are enti entirely and completely incorrect that the NIH has not ever and does not now fund gain-of-function research in the Wuhan Institute Do they fund Dr. Barrick? 
We do not fund Do you fund gain Dr. Barrett's gain-of-function research? D Dr. Barrett does not do gain-of-function research, and if it is, it's according to the guidelines, and it is being conducted in North Carolina, not You don't think inserting in a bat virus spike protein that he got from the Wuhan Institute into the SARS virus is gain-of-function? That you is would not— be in the minority because— at least 200 scientists have signed a statement from the Cambridge Working yeah. Group saying that it is gain of function. Well, it is not. And if you look at the grant and you look at the uh, progress reports, it is not gain of function, despite the fact that people tweet that. So do you still it. support sending money to the Wuhan Virology Institute? We do not send money now to the to Wuhan uh, Virology Institute. Do you support Institute. sending money? We did, under your tutelage. We were sending it through EcoHealth. It was a sub-agency right. and a sub-grant. Do you support that the money from NIH that was going to the Wuhan Institute? Let me explain to you why that was done. The SARS-CoV-1 originated in bats in China it would have been irresponsible of us if we did not investigate the bat viruses and the serology to see who might have been or, infected Or perhaps it would be irresponsible China. to send it to the Chinese government that we may not be able to trust with this uh, knowledge and with this uh, incredibly dangerous viruses. Government scientists like yourself who favor gain-of-function research I don't favor gain-of-function research in China. You are saying things that are not correct. Government defenders of gain-of-function, such as yourself, say that COVID-19 uh, mutations were random and not designed by man. But interestingly, the technique that Dr. Barrick developed forces mutations by serial passage through cell culture that the mutations appear to be natural. In fact, Dr. Barrick named the technique the noceum technique because the mutations appear naturally. Nicholas Baker in the New York Magazine said, nobody would know if the virus had been fabricated in a laboratory or grown in nature. Government authorities in the U.S., including yourself, unequivocally deny that COVID-19 could have escaped a lab. But even Dr. Xi in Wuhan wasn't so sure. According to Nicholas Baker, Dr. Xi wondered, could this new virus have come from her own laboratory? She checked her records frantically and found no matches. That really took a load off my mind, she said. I had not slept for days. The director of the gain-of-function research in Wuhan couldn't sleep because she was terrified that it might be in her lab. Dr. Barrick, an advocate of gain-of-function research, admits the main problem that the Institute of Virology has is the outbreak occurred in close proximity. What are the odds? Barrick responded, could you rule out a laboratory escape? The answer in this case is probably not. Will you, in front of this group, categorically say that the COVID-19 could not have occurred through serial passage in a laboratory? I do not have any accounting of what the Chinese may have done, and I'm fully in favor of any further investigation of what went on in China. However, I will repeat again, the NIH and NIAID categorically has not funded gain-of-function research to be conducted in the Wuhan Institute but of Virology. You do support it in the U.S. We have 11 labs doing it, and you have allowed it here. We have a committee to do it, but the committee has granted every exemption. You're you're fooling with Mother Nature here. You're allowing super viruses to be created with a 15% mortality. It's very dangerous. I think it was a huge mistake to share this with China, and it's a huge mistake to allow this to continue in the United States. And we should be very careful to investigate where this virus came from. I fully agree that you should investigate where the virus came from. But again, we have not funded gain-of-function research on this virus in the Wuhan Institute of Virology, you're, no matter how many times words, you're you say words, it, it, there it was didn't research, happen. There was research done with Dr. Xi and Dr. Barrick. They have collaborated on gain-of-function research where they enhanced the SARS virus to infect human airway cells, and they did it by merging a new spike protein on it. That is gain-of-function. That was joint research between the Wuhan Institute and Dr. Barrick, you can't deny it. Senator Paul, your time, time has expired. Dr. Fauci, I will let you respond to that. We'll, we need to move on. Excuse me? You're, I will allow you to respond to that, and then we'll move on. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to say, we, I, I don't know how many times I can say it, Madam Chair. We did not fund gain-of-function research to be conducted in the Wuhan Institute 
a virology. Thank you. Senator Smith. Okay, well, he said it over and over. You heard it for yourself. Uh, Anthony Fauci says that he did not, that NIH did not fund any gain of function research. And also he said that he didn't know what China was doing. He said, I don't know what they were doing in their research facility there at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Okay, so he said those two things. Now we fast forward to July and Rand Paul comes forward. This is July of 2021 still. So Rand Paul comes forward with some more evidence and we're gonna watch this next video clip and then we're gonna get to the bombshell evidence that was uncovered just in the last few days. So let's go to this second clip. This is July of 2021. Anthony Fauci continues to deny it and they get into a very heated exchange. Dr. Fauci, as you are aware, it is a crime to lie to Congress. Section 1001 of the U.S. Criminal Code creates a felony and a five-year penalty for lying to Congress. On your last trip to our committee on May 11th, you stated that the NIH has not ever and does not now fund gain-of-function research in the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And yet, gain-of-function research was done entirely in the Wuhan Institute by Dr. Xi and was funded by the NIH. I'd like to ask unanimous consent to insert into the record the Wuhan virology paper entitled Discovery of a Rich Gene Pool of Bat SARS-Related Coronaviruses. Please deliver a copy of the journal article to Dr. Fauci. In this paper, Dr. Xi credits the NIH and lists the actual number of the grant that she was given by the NIH. In this paper, she took two bat coronavirus genes, spike genes, and combined them with a SARS-related backbone to create new viruses that are not found in nature. These lab-created viruses were then to shown to replicate in humans. These experiments combine genetic information from different coronaviruses that infect animals, but not humans, to create novel artificial viruses able to infect human cells. Viruses that in nature only infect animals were manipulated in the Wuhan lab to gain the function of infecting humans. This research fits the definition of the research that the NIH said was subject to the pause in 2014 to 2017, a pause in funding on gain of function. But the NIH failed to recognize this, defines it away, and it never came under any scrutiny. Dr. Richard E. Bright, a molecular biologist from Rutgers, described this research in Wuhan as, the Wuhan lab used NIH funding to construct novel chimeric SARS-related coronaviruses able to infect human cells and laboratory animals. This is high-risk research that creates new potential pandemic pathogens, potential pandemic pathogens that exist only in the lab, not in nature. This research matches, these are Dr. Ebright's words, this research matches, indeed epitomizes, the definition of gain of function research done entirely in Wuhan, for which there was supposed to be a federal pause. Dr. Fauci, knowing that it is a crime to lie to Congress, do you wish to retract your statement of May 11th where you claimed that the NIH never funded gain of function research in Wuhan? Your microphone. Senator Paul, I have never lied before the Congress, and I do not retract that statement. This paper that you are referring to was judged by qualified staff up and down the chain as not being gain of function. So what was, let take, me finish. You take an animal virus and you increase its yeah, transmissibility yeah. to humans, right. you're saying that's not gain of function? Yeah, that is correct. And, and Senator Paul, you do not know what you are talking about, quite frankly. And I want to say that officially. You do not know what you are talking about. Let's okay, you get NIH, one person. Let's read from the NIH Adam, Chair, definition can I answer of gain of function. This is your definition that you guys wrote. It says that scientific research that increases the transmissibility among mammals is gain of function. They took animal viruses that only occur in animals 
and they increase their transmissibility to humans. How you can say that is not gain of function. It is not. It's a dance, and you're dancing around this because you're trying to obscure responsibility for four million people dying around the world okay. from a pandemic. And let's let send Dr. Fauci. I have to, well, now you're getting into something. If the point that you are making is that the, the, the grant that was funded as a sub-award from EcoHealth to Wuhan created SARS-CoV-2. That's where you are getting. Let me finish. We don't know. Well, we don't wait know a minute. It didn't I come from the lab, but you, all the evidence is pointing that it came from the lab, you, and there will be responsibility for those who funded the right. lab, including yourself. I totally This committee resent, will allow the witness to respond. I totally resent the lie that you are now propagating, Senator, because if you look at the viruses that were used in the experiments that were given in the annual reports that were published in the literature, it is molecularly impossible. No one's saying those it, viruses it is, caused it. It no is, one is molecularly. That those viruses caused the pandemic. What we're alleging is that gain of function research was going on in that lab and NIH funded it. That you is can't not. Get away from it. It meets your definition and you are obfuscating the truth. I'm Senator not Paul, obfuscating the truth. Senator you Paul's are the one. Time is expired, but I will allow the witness to. Let me just finish. I want everyone to understand that if you look at those viruses, and that's judged by qualified virologists and evolutionary biologists. Those viruses are molecularly impossible no one's to result they are. No in SARS-CoV-2. No one's saying those viruses the pandemic. Paul, We're saying they are gain-of-function yeah, viruses because they were they're animal not. viruses that became more transmissible in human, and you funded it. And you, you admit the truth. And you implying... Senator Paul, your time has expired, and I will allow witnesses right. who come before this committee to respond. And, and you are implying that what we did was responsible for the deaths of individual. I totally resent that. Have and if anybody and is lying been. here, Senator, it is you. Uh, Senator Smith. Well, that got really heated. Um, you know, it's good to go back and watch these videos because when this was going on, this was still fairly early on in the pandemic. I mean, this was July of 2021. So two years ago, Matt, remember where we were two years ago, how far we have come. Um, and two years ago, it was still a conspiracy theory to even suggest that COVID came from a lab. They were still very much holding on to, no, COVID came naturally. Anybody who believes it's a lab from a lab is a conspiracy theorist. There were more and more people talking about it, but it was still very much in that realm. And so Rand Paul actually questioning Fauci on this, asking about gain-of-function research, was really at that time in July, May and July of 2021, that was uh, you know, really bold of him to do. Now we watch these videos and we're like, well, yeah, we know now we know more. So when we watch the videos, we're like, yeah, Rand Let Paul's me finish. right. And, Shake an animal. Uh, and gain of fun and, and Fauci is being, uh, you know, he's obviously lying and Rand Paul is grilling him on something that we now all are, are, are much more aware of. And so it's really interesting to see this. So he's he's saying Fauci is saying to Rand Paul, you don't know what gain of function is. He Rand Paul mentions this paper. I do want to show you the paper that he mentions where the scientists, these are from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and they're the ones who published this paper, Discovery of a Rich Gene Pool of Bat SARS-Related Coronaviruses Provides New Insights into the Origin of SARS Coronavirus. And these are a bunch of scientists from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and they cite in that paper that they were receiving funding from the NIH and that they were doing gain-of-function research. So that's what he was pulling up in that July hearing. Now, fast forward to just this week, and the select subcommittee on the coronavirus pandemic has come across an email. This email was sent by Fauci to other scientists in the NIH. This email was sent in February of 2020. So this is really early, very, very beginning of the pandemic. And in this email, Fauci says this, and this is why now Fauci is potentially in big, fat trouble, and he could end up uh, going to jail. Rand Paul has has uh, referred him to the DOJ, to Merrick Garland, with this evidence, and is hoping that uh, Anthony Fauci gets indicted for perjury. So Fauci says, 
this is from him. This is to guys like Francis Collins, uh, Garrett uh, Grisby, Brian Harrison, Lawrence Kerr, Robert uh, Cadlick. It looks like so a bunch of people within the HHS and the uh, NIH. And he says, folks, and he talks about the call with Jeremy Farrar. So he is giving a roundup of the phone call that he had. And he says, Francis, you know, he goes on and he talks about these are the things that we discussed in the meeting. But the highlighted version, the highlighted part right there says the suspicion was heightened by the fact that scientists in Wuhan University are known to have been working on gain of function experiments to determine the molecular mechanisms associated with bat viruses adapting to human infection and the outbreak originated in Wuhan. So he's saying that there is concern. Um, they're concerned about the fact that upon viewing the sequences of several isolates in the NCOV, there were mutations in the virus that would be most un. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read it, but he's got this stamp on it. Most unusual to have evolved naturally in bats, and that there was a suspicion that this mutation was intentionally inserted. So he's talking about now. If you remember the hearings that were just had with uh, doctors uh, Gary and Kirsten Anderson, if you remember, they just were called up in front of Congress recently. And these are the two scientists who raised suspicion about COVID potentially coming from a lab. And they then uh, changed their tune three to four days later. And suddenly, three to four days later, after meeting with Fauci and after meeting with Collins, they suddenly were saying, definitely did not come from a lab. There's no way that it came from a lab. Anybody who says so is a conspiracy theorist. So this is the meeting that he's talking about. He's talking about when they first raised their suspicions, these scientists at the NIH and the uh, and HHS went and had a meeting and basically talked these guys out of out of that belief. They but prior to that meeting, Fauci had gone through funding. And this is where I think Rand Paul could probably find and the select subcommittee uh, for this could actually probably find even more evidence, more concrete evidence is that when they look through when Fauci was prior to this meeting with those scientists who were having suspicions that it might have come from a lab, he was going through funding for China. And he was looking at various, okay, what grants do we have? How much, what, what money is there? And he was looking at conflicts of interest and he was looking at who are we going to piss off if we start talking about this virus having come from a lab in China? So that's when, after he does that research in the early morning, he then in the afternoon meets with these guys. After that afternoon meeting, he then writes this email, which is a recap. That email now has it in writing. He says the suspicion was heightened by the fact that scientists, he's talking about the suspicion of those scientists who quickly changed their tune a few days later, saying their suspicion was heightened by the fact that scientists in Wuhan University are known to have been working on gain of function experiments to determine the molecular mechanisms associated with bat viruses adapting to human infection and the outbreak originated in Wuhan. So he's saying they did gain of function research. Now he's saying in Congress to Rand Paul, your definition of gain of function research, at first he says in that May hearing, there was no gain of function research. We did not fund it. However, again, it's going to come down to really what was what was Fauci. First of all, he lied just by saying they didn't do gain of function research in China. I don't know what they were doing in China. No gain of no gain of function happened there. And clearly he was saying in this email gain of function happened was happening in Wuhan. So he already lied right there. But he could actually get nailed even harder with more lies if it turns out that he absolutely knew that there was money that was being flowed into the Wuhan Institute of Virology from the NIH through EcoHealth Alliance. Uh, if he knows about those funds and if that was something that he uncovered that morning before he sat down with these scientists in a meeting to talk them out of the lab leak theory, that would be even more damning. And that is potentially something that they would do as they investigate the case further. So, um, and they are investigating further. Actually, here's a letter. This is from the Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Pandemic. They just sent this letter a few days ago. This is to the Department of, um, they're, they're asking the Department of Health and Human Services to come up with more documentation. They said to assist the Select Subcommittee. So they cite the email that Fauci wrote saying gain of function research in Wuhan. They, they cite that February, 2020 email. And then they say, look, uh, now that we've got this and it's now clear 
to assist the select subcommittee in its investigation into the origins of COVID-19 pandemic, we request the following documents and information as soon as possible, but no later than July 27th of 2023. So they only have about nine days to produce this documentation. They said, one, any document, summary, memo, one pager, or other work product that was produced because of the February 1st, 2021, uh, 2020 conference call as referenced in the enclosed email chain. And two, all notes in the custody and control of the department of any of its sub agencies resulting from February 1st, 2020 conference call. So it says the select subcommittee on the coronavirus pandemic is authorized to investigate the origins of the coronavirus pandemic, including but not limited to the federal government's funding of gain of function research and executive branch policies, deliberations, decisions, activities, and internal and external communications related to the coronavirus pandemic. Um, so under House Resolution 5, to ask any follow-up related questions, please contact the committee staff. So they're asking for this documentation now. So they're seeing, they found this email. Now that they've got this email, they're looking for more evidence. I would suspect that they're going to uncover more phone calls that Anthony Fauci made that morning before the meeting when he was looking around at who funded what and where and how much, how much money do we have tied up with China? What are we going to lose if we accuse them of having the coronavirus, uh, having COVID-19 come from their lab? What are the implications of that? Any sort of emails, any sort of phone calls, any sort of meetings that were had around that discussion, my guess is that will uh, that will be uncovered in the coming months. And Anthony Fauci might be nailed to the wall. The guy might actually be going to, I, you know, like I said, I doubt jail. I'm sure Biden will be uh, pardoning him and or whatever, you know, saying, oh, we're not going to, you know, Anthony Fauci, the hero of COVID, because it's so political. It is so partisan. And so there's really not any hope that Anthony, you know, but, but if, if, you know, if there's actually people being honest, uh, he should get the same treatment that anybody who lied when they were doing the Trump investigation, when they were looking at his, uh, during Russiagate, there were a lot of guys that, that were indicted for perjury and obstruction of justice during the Trump years that it would only be fair if the same treatment was given to anybody else no matter their political leanings or no matter if they're a hero of certain, you know, one side or the other. So that, let me just see if there's anything. I think that is it um, on this particular story. I think that's what we've got. There's more that, of course, is going to be developing around these investigations, and we will always be bringing you the latest information about that because this is important stuff. We still do not know how covid uh, how we ended up in that pandemic. And we do want some answers to that. And that was one thing during that video when Fauci was saying, you're implying that the gain of function research made COVID and that this is what caused all of this. And that's not true. And, and Rand Paul was right when he said, we don't know. Again, we do not know. We still don't know whether or not this virus came from a lab. We don't know if it came from somebody eating a bat in a wet market. We don't know. We have our suspicions. We have increasing evidence going in one direction. It was uh, an absolute farce when in the beginning and all th and, and even, you know, the, the years during the pandemic when they were saying anybody who thinks it's a lab leak is a conspiracy theorist, as if they had hard evidence that it came from a bat. They had no evidence of that. They never found the bat. They never th found the person who ate the bat who got COVID for the first time and then spread it around the Wuhan wet market. They had no evidence of that, yet they insisted that that was the way the COVID-19 pandemic began. And anyone who believed it was a lab leak theory was an absolute cuckoo conspiracy theorist. And the reality is we don't know. We still don't know. And that is the appropriate answer and response. So when Fauci says it didn't come from the Wuhan lab, that is not our gain of function research had nothing to do with COVID-19. He doesn't know that. Even if the EcoHealth Alliance uh, gain of function research that they were doing in conjunction with the Wuhan Institute of Virology, even if that wasn't directly related to the COVID-19 pandemic, it could have been a, a piece of research that contributed to the further research that then released COVID-19 into the world. It could have just been a piece of it, but that piece of it was important enough in order to unleash this pandemic on us all and ruin three years worth of our lives. So um, we just don't know. We don't know. An investigation is warranted and it is good that they're doing it. And uh, we'll see what, ha what the next step is, but he has, but 
Rand Paul did refer Fauci to the Department of Justice and is seeking, um, saying that you know, he did commit perjury to Congress and therefore should be held accountable. And that would be the case because nobody is above the law, as they keep reminding us. Okay. Well, I want to tell you guys about our new sponsor. And this one I'm pretty excited about because I use this product um, fairly regularly. It is called Relief Band. And uh, this is for those of you like myself who get motion sickness. Maybe you get nausea for some reason. I'm, I get really horrible motion sickness. I can't read in a car. I go on, when I go to amusement parks, roller coasters are going to totally do me in. I'm just going to be sick. So at boats, forget boats. But when I got my relief band a couple of years ago, it really was a game changer for me. Um, I love to go on boats. I love to go to amusement parks. I love reading while I'm in a car, not driving, but you know, while somebody else is driving. And relief band has made all of that possible for me. I've tried everything. I tried the pills, that stuff that just knocks you out. Um, you know, I've tried a bunch of different things and nothing really worked, but relief band really has worked for me personally. So this is an FDA cleared anti-nausea wristband. It has been clinically proven to quickly relieve and effectively prevent nausea and vomiting associated with motion sickness, anxiety, migraines, hangovers, morning sickness, chemotherapy. Anytime you might be feeling nausea, this relief band could help you. And now you can actually use your HSA and FSA dollars to get the relief band. And it really does work for me. It's like you put on the, the wrist and it actually does pulse your wrist with these um, rhythmic kind of pulses. It doesn't hurt. It's just like a little vibration. You can feel it. And it actually sends senses like it's like magic, but it basically sends, you know, waves to your brain to tell you to stop being nauseous. And it really does make a world of difference. So if you need uh, everyday nausea relief, maybe because you got morning sickness or something or or you're going through chemo, or you just need the occasional cure from nausea, like I do when I go to an amusement park or I get on a boat. Their patented technology makes feeling sick a thing of the past. So get Relief Band. It is a band you wear on your wrist. It's going to be great. It's you, you could change the intensity, so if it's not working well for you, you could turn it up and you could get more uh, relief for you. But go to ReliefBand.com and get 20% off your Relief Band, as well as free shipping when you use the promo code KIM at check out. So go to reliefband.com, use Kim at checkout and get yourself 20% off plus free shipping. And it really does. Uh, it, I mean, it really has worked for me. So glad to have them as a sponsor of the show. I like products that work and uh, that is one of the products that works. And that's the type of products that I talk about here on this show.